Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I am here today to speak to you as a child of God, as a minister, as a born-again Christian. You know, recently I've been having a number of people approaching me about the situation that the nations are facing, nations of the world are facing. And a lot of people have been asking me, Prophet, please tell us, what should we do? What is the Lord saying about the whole thing? And honestly, it has been a very challenging moment for me to go and pray and seek the Lord and hear what is the Lord saying about the challenges that we are facing, the pandemic all over the world. The world is crying about coronavirus. Over a million people have been infected. And lots of people are, are dying. And everybody is wondering what is the Lord saying about this whole thing? What is happening to the church? And I want to speak to you today. I'm speaking to you from Pretoria, uh, from our church. And, you know, we are on lockdown. Church services are not going on. That is happening in most countries. And I've been talking to my sons, our churches, and everybody about what we are facing right now. But I always wanted to receive a direct word from the Lord. I didn't want to get something from people who are talking, researches and all that. I just wanted to hear what is the Lord saying about this situation? What is the Lord saying about the challenges we are facing right now? And as I prayed to hear what the Lord is saying about our challenge, this is what the Lord laid in my heart. He revealed something to me that I never thought about. The Lord said to me, I should go and check in 1869. And I will realize that in 1869, there was a sickness that came as a pandemic all over the world. It was called the Russian flu. And when that pandemic came, a lot of people died. And if you look at the Russian flu in 1869, you see the same signs and symptoms of the coronavirus. And a lot of people died. And after that Russian flu, there was a great outbreak of servants of God rising and the gospel entering nations and the greatest healing movement. And people were desperate for the healing power of God. And therefore the church grew. And a lot of churches were planted in 1869 and 1870 and beyond that. And then 50 years after, which is 1919, there was a second outbreak, which really, really became the biggest pandemic that ever happened in the world. If you have made a research, you discover that in 1919, there was a big outbreak called the Spanish flu, which killed so many people. Actually, researchers say, in 1919, there were 2 billion people living on earth. And of those 2 billion, 500 million of them were infected by the sickness. A quarter of the population of the earth were infected by the sickness. Well, I know that there are some researchers that say even a third, 33% of the people living on earth were infected. What coronavirus has done, it's nothing compared to that. And during that time, a lot of people died in a terrible way. If you make a research about the Spanish flu, you discover that up to 100 million people died. 50 million died directly because of the sickness. The other 50 million direct died because of underlying sickness connect that way became very strong because of that Spanish flu. That if you look at that, 100 million out of 2 billion people, that's 5% of the world's population wiped out of the earth because of that sickness. And after that sickness, the another healing movement came. That's where we saw the Smith Middle Smith coming into, into action in the world and people changing and great move of God, great gifts of the spirit, signs and wonders came during that time through the lives of many ministers. And the greatest move of the spirit came. That's where people like Amy Semple McPherson you know, in South Africa, we had a man called the Dwaba who just rose up and started moving in signs and wonders. And for every evil that the enemy did, God brought a great revival, which brought healings, miracles, great move of God. And then thereafter, 50 years after, it was 1969. Remember, 1869 to 1919 is 50 years. 1919 to 1969, 50 years. In 1969, there was another pandemic that happened, which was called the Hong Kong flu. And that pandemic killed over a million people. And after that pandemic, a great healing movement came. That's where we saw the Aura Roberts. 
rising. That's where we, we saw the people like uh, the Shambaks rising at that time. Great move of God hit the world and a lot of people manifested. That's when we saw Catherine Kulma and a lot of great ministers coming up at that time, just after that flu. And not only that, around Africa, that's where we saw Benson Idahosa rising, becoming the lion that transformed our continent. Even up to today, we can still see the footprints of what Benson Idahosa did. In the nation of South Africa, God raised a lot of people. That's where we saw Richard Ngidi rising. That's where we saw Nicholas Bengu rising. That's where we saw William Duma rising. We saw Nseto rising in our nation. Miracles, signs and wonders that we have never seen before hit our nation, shook our nation, and the gospel grew. Churches were planted. Great wonders happened. And now, 50 years after 2019, the coronavirus came. Is that a coincidence? That every 50 years, there is a certain pandemic that hits the world. 2019, coronavirus came. Because of the coronavirus, God is going to raise a lot of healing gifts, anointed people. Many signs and wonders we have never seen are going to rise. Miracles are going to happen. Nations that did not know God are going to know God. People that never saw the miracles are going to see miracles. I want you to brace yourself. If you have the healing gift in your life, if you have ever had passion for healing, for miracles in your life, this is the time for the greatest move of God. The greatest wave is about to come upon your life. I've seen miracles before. I've seen blind eyes in my ministry opening. I've seen cripples walking, deaf ears hearing. I've seen miracles. I've seen God extending people's legs and doing a lot of miracles. But the Lord said to me, you ain't seen nothing yet. The great things are about to happen. The greatest miracles you've ever seen are about to happen. God is about to show the world. He's a great God. He did it after the 1869. He did it after 1919. He did it after 1969. He will do it right now. Every 50 years, there's been a pandemic that hit the world. And after the pandemic, there's been a great move of God. And even right now, the great move of God is coming. I'm speaking to every continent. Get ready for the move of God. Right in the Middle East, get ready for the greatest move of God. You will see people seeking the Lord. You will see nations coming to Christ. You will see healings you have never seen in the Islamic land. The mighty hand of God, evangelists coming into those lands and preaching the gospel. And miracles are going to happen. Right in Asia, you will see God moving in a mighty way. Right in Europe, God is going to move and reheat the nation, revisit the nation. Revival will break out in Europe. In North America, you will see the mighty hand of God. In South America, the mighty hand, a big wave is coming in the Latin American nation, in the Caribbean islands, in the islands of the world, in Australia, in Oceania, in Antarctica, around Africa, the great move of God in the northern part of Africa. You will see the great move of God in the West Africa. Get ready for the move of God in the East Africa. Move of God is coming in Central Africa, in Southern Africa, in South Africa, in all the provinces. I speak to the Northwest, to the Mpumalanga, to Limpopo, to Gauteng, to Free State, to Eastern Cape, Western Cape, KZN. I speak to all the provinces. I speak to all of them. Experience the move of God. It's about to come to every province in our country. As God did it in those nations, He's about to do it right now. Get ready. Everybody prepare yourself. Let prayers rise. Let prayer movements rise. Let ministers rise. Every office, I speak to all the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers, and everyone. Get ready for the great move of God. Every intercessor, get ready for the move of God. There's something big God is about to do. This coronavirus has come so that the world can see what God can do. When the enemy comes like a flood, God will raise the standard. I prophesy to you right now. I know everybody has been saying to me, prophet from the US, from UK, from North America, from North Africa, from West Africa, everybody has been saying to me, prophet, what is the Lord saying? But this is the word of the Lord right now. This is the greatest move of God we are going to see. Prepare yourself, prepare your media, prepare the grounds, prepare your church, prepare people around you. You are going to see the biggest harvest ever and a lot of churches are going to be planted than any other time. The devil is going to regret 
what has happened right now. God bless you. The greatest move of God is coming your way in Jesus' name. Greetings in the name of Jesus. I want to thank the Lord for this time as we are continuing with our series on leadership. Uh, remember, I did a four-part series on leadership looking at the life of David. And I said I'm going to do about a five-part series. I hope uh, it will be up to five, talking about the life of Joseph. And all in all, I'm basically speaking on leadership. And there are many things I'm trying to show you and that we learn from about leadership. Thank you for tuning on and listening to me right now. This is Bishop Tabo Masenia, um, as you're going to listen to us here in the word of the Lord. And I want you to just be with me as we pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I present all the listeners and the viewers right now in the name of Jesus, that they'll be touched by your hand and be drawn to this message for the transformation of their life and the destiny that you have set before them. I give you the glory and the honor because you are God and above all, you are faithful. May your name be lifted up, glorified, excite, exalted above every other name. I pray in the name of Jesus that nobody under the sound of my voice will remain the same, but will be touched and transformed by the power of the Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I want to thank the Lord for this time. I want to thank him for his presence in our midst. And I believe that he is about to do something great as we are going through the way today. You know, um, on leadership, as we go through few aspects, I know people are complaining about the situations we are facing right now. But I want you to be positive, face it effectively. A few years from right now, we'll talk about what we have gone through as a nation, as a continent, and as, a, as, the, as the globe, as the world as a whole. We will be able to say, we went through this and God has been with us. God has been faithful. We will sing songs of jubilation. So I want you to just prepare your heart as we are going into the word of the Lord. We are studying about the life of Joseph and I'm still doing the book of Genesis 37, verse 18 to 36. Then from there we'll skip to Genesis 39. I encourage you again, go back and read the scriptures on your own. Verse, 30, verse 18 to 36 in Genesis 37. Then go to verse chapter 39, read the whole chapter. Learn what the Bible is saying about the life of Joseph. He will change you, transform you when it comes to leadership. The Bible talks about this man called Joseph. It says from verse 18, talks about him being sold into slavery by his own brothers. Remember the last message I said with you, I told you about leadership. When God has chosen you for leadership, favor will be part of the benefits that will come upon your life. Love will come upon you. People will start loving you and favoring you. Multiple talents or gifts will come upon your, your life. The garment of many colors will manifest in your life. And because of that, people will hate you. And I said, as you grow, you will turn these giftings into dreams. You start dreaming, planning, strategizing how to be bigger than who you are. How to go beyond your city, beyond your region, beyond your nation, beyond your state, beyond your continent. And people will hate you more. The Bible says because Joseph had dreams, people hated him more. Now, in addition to that, after they hated him, then there was a plot. When people hate you, when people are against you, they don't end there. They come up with a plot of getting rid of you. A plot of getting rid of you. They may not get rid of, you, rid of you physically, like killing you, but they will make plans to get rid of you. Either you will lose your job, they'll make plans for you to lose your job. Either you lose the favor you have with the people, they will destroy your name, they will gossip you, they will do things. That's ways of getting rid of you. People like you, so let's gossip about him. People like him, let's plot things again. Let's discover what is his weakness. Let's use the weakness against him to destroy him. That's what happens to every person who rises in the form of leadership and becomes effective. People plot against you. So they plotted against Joseph. And the brothers agreed, let's plot against him. And then they knew that we will find him. And the Bible says, as he was coming, the brothers saw him from afar. And they plotted how to destroy him. And the Bible says clearly, it says, they agreed and said, let's kill him and see what will happen to his dream. 
It does not say, let's kill him and see what will happen to him. Which means when they were trying to kill him, they were not killing a person. They wanted to kill the dream. So when people try to destroy you, scandalize you, criticize you, badmouth you, strategize things against you at work, strategize things against you in, in, in the family, in life, in everywhere. They are not fighting you per se, but they are fighting the dream and the gift in your life. So the, unfortunately, they can't get rid of the dream and the gift and leave you. So they have to get rid of you in order to get rid of the dream, the giftings in your life. So people, as I always say, they don't hate you, they hate what you carry. They're not against you. They are against where you, where you, where, what you care. They are not fighting you. They are fighting where you are going. So it's important for you to understand that. Be able to separate yourself and what God has given you. So when you stand strong and fight and be bold, keep your faith and keep praying and keep your focus, do it for what God has given you. But you as an individual, I can assure you, people like you. So they planned, they saw him from afar and said, let us kill him. And see what will happen to his dream. I want to make this clear to you. The Bible says they saw him from afar. Which means people who are against you. They don't see your near. They see your far. They don't see where you are. They don't see where you are about to go. But they see how far you can go. That's why some people will fight you and say he thinks he's rich. What they're basically saying is we can see that in the future you will be rich. So we are fighting you for where you are going. Oh, he thinks he is the greatest musician ever. They're basically saying, you are going to be the greatest musician. So we'll fight you not to get there. That's what people do. Enemies have an ability that people who like you don't have. They are prophetic. They can see where you're going. So if you're going to make it in life, when people criticize you and mention things about you that you are not, when people mention big things that you don't carry, just know there is a prophetic grace upon every enemy in your life to prophesy where God is taking you. And if you can understand that, you will not be threatened by enmity. You will understand enmity is meant to build something big out of you. Enmity is not only meant to destroy you, but to build something big out of you. If you can be able to understand that, you will be able to say, okay, this is what my enemies are saying. So this is how far I'm going. Somebody could be pushing a wheelbarrow selling vegetables and people hate him and say, why is he doing that? Does he think he's fruit and vegetables? It's because people can see you are not going to end on a wheelbarrow. You will end up having a fruit and vegetable market. So they will fight you not for the wheelbarrow, but a fruit and vegetable market. So people fight you for where you are going, not where you are. Once you can understand that, you will stop sitting there and crying and say, but why do people fight me when I'm just a simple person? I'm an ordinary person. What have I done and all that? It's because they are prophetic. Every enemy carries a prophetic gift. Every enemy carries a prophetic ability to see where you are going and to fight you according to where you will be in life. I know right now a lot of people are sitting thinking we are on lockdown, this is happening, this is happening, we are not able to go to work, we are not able to go to church, we are not able to do this. But I can tell you, God has put you in a plate. He's busy turning you around. You are in an oven where God is preparing you for something big. And if you can make sure that whatever God wants to build out of you in this time, God is able to achieve that. When this season is over, you will walk out of here in celebration. So Joseph faced that. The brothers decided to sell him. So everyone who dreams to be a leader, you will be sold. People are going to sell you. And not only people who are against you, but even people that you think they love you, they will sell you. People who are very close to you will sell you. Being sold, being betrayed is part of the package of leadership. Somebody who's listening to me, especially last week and this week, is saying, oh, then I'd rather not be a leader. If there's so much that I have to go through, I'd rather not be a leader. Let me tell you, this world will not make it if everybody's a coward. This person will, this world will not make it if everybody's fearful, if everybody's trying to hide himself, protect himself. We won't make it. But it takes people who are willing to go and say, come what may. I know what I'm carrying and I will not die. I'm going to face what I'm carrying. I'm going to face the world. What I'm carrying is big enough to take me 
nations to take me to a higher level so when you want to experience great leadership just know somewhere somehow somebody is going to sell you and i can tell you right now i'm not a prophet of doom if you have not been sold you're still going to be sold it's part of the package if you have not been betrayed you're still going to be betrayed if you have not experienced disloyalty you will experience it one day every leader with a dream who's going far these are part of the things that he goes through in his life whether it's in business whether it's in sports it's in entertainment it's in politics it's in ministry it's in the family it's in the community somewhere these things will happen to you and they are part of the package so i'm saying brace yourself be strong prepare yourself you know to be forewarned is to be forearmed is better you know that i'll go through this and when i go through this how do i react you know how to handle the things you go through when you face i have seen people who have faced difficult things who shut down churches shut down businesses gave up on their political career gave up on their marriage they just because somebody betrayed them somebody sold them and they gave up because they were not forewarned that this is part of the package this is what you will go through so joseph went through it and their brothers decided let's sell him and the bible says they took him took his garment of many colors that's what they did not like slaughtered an animal filled the garment with blood so that they can tell their father that he was killed by a wild animal that's what people do if they want to destroy you they will fabricate stories which will look believable i mean if you see a, a garment with blood all over and it's torn and you're told your son was killed by a wild animal that is believable it's a believable thing every leader will face a believable lie something that people will make and it will look real you know there's a african proverb i will say it in english it says people are able to make kettle or head of kettle out of clay and make it work it's not possible but what that proverb is basically says that people can fabricate a story about something that is not there but it will be so possible it will be so real so they decided we will take this garment give it to the father and say a wild animal killed him and the father will be able to see that the wild animal killed my son and will weep over his life so that is one of the biggest challenge we will face that in our journey of leadership we will face that and the bible says when they did that they started digging a pit to throw him inside that when after we've done this we'll throw him inside the pit and then we we will then take this garment give it to our father with the aim that we will see what we can do with his life overnight as we are thinking now understand this with all that planned very well god still is there some people will say where is god why isn't god intervening why isn't god blocking this some of the worst things we have gone through in our life it doesn't mean god was not there he was there he saw what we have gone through i think most of you have heard the story about the footprints that where you don't see two footprints god is carrying you and is the toughest time of your life and when they had planned all this this is what we're going to do to our brother we will take the garment show it to our father they planned all these things and say so we will say wild animals killed him we'll throw him inside a pit i always tell to people that they threw him inside a pit which i call it a prophet in training a prophet in training everyone who is going to be raised by god to a great life will have a pit of his life you will face a pit if you are going to be a leader where people will throw you into a pit but god will take you out of a pit and when god take you out of a pit you all know moving from the pit outside of a pit it's elevation everyone who's thrown into a pit is the recipe for god to elevate you he's going to take you out and elevate you and he was thrown inside a pit by his brothers and the bible says when they threw him inside a pit one of them whose name was ruben influenced them to leave him in the pit with the aim or the intention to come back at night and take him out of the pit why is it like that i want you to be aware that when people are planning evil against you god always makes sure that amongst the people planning evil against you there is one who likes you or one who is your advocate 
in the midst of your enemies. You will always have a rubber type of a person in your life who will advocate for you whilst people are planning things against you. And the Bible says, Reuben said to them, let's not kill him, let's throw him in the pit. He is as good as dead in the pit. With the aim of coming to rescue him the following day. So you understand when people are working together to destroy you, there's one who somehow wants to save you. And I want to encourage you, this child of God, take your time and pray and say, Father, for every war I'm facing, there is a Reuben in that war. And ask the Lord, God, make my Reuben strong. Give my Reuben wisdom. Make my Reuben to stand his ground. Make my Reuben not to be swayed away, not to be shaken, but to stand strong and pull me out of the challenges of life. Everyone, I have my own Reubens. I have all these things and I have my own Reubens. I might not know them, but I pray for them. I ask God to give them strength and wisdom that they may save me during the time of calamity. Every leader faces them. And the Bible says they threw him in the pit. And after they throw, threw him in the pit, whilst they were relaxing, they saw the Midianites passing. And when they saw the Midianites passing, they decided to sell him to the Midianites. They decided to sell him to the Midianites as a slave into Egypt. They sold him to the Midianites as a slave into Egypt. Now remember this, these are his brothers. These are not spiritual brothers. These are not brothers in the church. These are not brothers in business. These are blood brothers, biological brothers. And they plant this. Now I want you to make, make you aware. If blood brothers can plant this, rather be very much careful how you build your leadership. Build your leadership in such a way that your trust, your faith, your hope is in God. Because God will never change his ways. God will never turn against you. God will never betray you. God will never be disloyal to you. God will never stand against you. But God is always there for you. So as you're building your leadership, let your life in God be very strong. Let your commitment to God be very strong. Put your trust in God. Know that this God will never disappoint you. So they planned all this. And as they planned this, the Midianites passed. And the Bible says, as the Midianites passed, they decided we are going to sell him to the Midianites. And they sold him to the Midianites. And after selling him to the Midianites, they went back to their father and told their father, our brother is dead. We didn't find his body, but this is what we got. A garment of many colors, torn into pieces, full of blood. A wild animal destroyed him. And I believe they didn't just go and talk the way I'm talking lightly. I believe they were crying. They were rolling on the ground. They were sobbing, showing that we lost a brother. And the father believed them. The story they gave was believable. I can tell you some of the best people in the acting, it's people who are against you. There are people who will do things against you and cry to a point that they are believable. And they will give actions that will make everybody believe. Just so that what they are doing against you might be justifiable. And that everybody can believe that what they are saying is true. So they did that to Joseph. And after doing that, the father believed it. And Joseph was sold into slavery. And in him going into slavery, the Bible says he went into the house of Potiphar. Now, mind you, they did not take him and sold him to Potiphar. They took him to a slave trade area. And that's the wife of Potiphar saw him there and bought him to be part of the slaves in the house. Now, God had a plan. Remember, God told him, you are going to be great. Now, God, when he goes into slavery, God takes him into the house of a ruler. That's how powerful God is. He used the enmity of their brothers and the selling of Joseph to take him closer to his destiny. That's how God operates. Don't cry when people sell you. Don't cry when people betray you, become disloyal to you and stand against you. They are the best tickets closer to your breakthrough. They are the best tickets closer to where God is taking you. They are giving you something you wouldn't get yourself. They're sending you into a place you wouldn't send yourself. 
So when these things happen to you, they are part of the journey of leadership. And I want to assure you, Joseph got there as a slave. He had never been a slave in his life, never worked as a slave. God then is in, in there as a slave. That is Genesis 39. And the Bible says he worked with all his goodness. He was a fair, handsome young boy who worked with all commitment in the house of Potiphar. He was very loyal, did everything right in slavery. I want to tell you right now that if life throws you lower than wherever you have been, even there, be loyal. Even there, be a hard worker. Even there, commit right in the midst of that. I know it's not one thing you're used to. I know you're used to a high life, but life has thrown you down. Still have the same loyalty. Still have the same faithfulness and commitment. When Joseph was thrown into slavery, mind you, Joseph came from a very rich family, wealthy family, doing very well. Twelve brothers, everything was good for them. Then he sold from there into slavery, not just to be an ordinary citizen, but to slavery. Can you imagine moving from being a multi-millionaire and you are sold into being a slave? Not an ordinary citizen. That would frustrate you. Some would have depression. Some can be suicidal. But he got then said, I have a dream that God showed me. And what God showed me will come to pass, regardless of the slavery that I'm facing. It will come to pass. So whatever God showed you, I don't know what is it that God showed you, but agree that whatever God showed you will not be diluted, will not be cast out or destroyed by the situation you're facing. I don't know what you're facing right now. Might be facing sickness, maybe facing financial difficulty, facing rejection, facing people standing in your way and everything not going well. But does that cancel the call of God in your life? No. Does that cancel the gifts of the Spirit in your life? No. Does that cancel the vision that God showed you about politics? No. Does it cancel what God said to you about business, finance, wealth, success? No. All the things God showed you, told you, they're still standing, regardless of where you are. So I'm encouraging you right now. You might have gone through the prison of your life, gone through the pit of your life, gone through slavery, gone through being sell, sold by your brothers, gone through the pit of your life, going through all the things. But that does not change what God disclosed about you. And keep your focus, keep your faith. Right now, in the name that is above every other name, the name of Jesus, stretch out your hands towards me as I'm going to pray for you. My Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, here's my brother, my sister, who's going through a lot of storms in his life and discouraged, feeling pain, feeling like, where are you? Why isn't God intervening? I pray that the hand of the Lord will touch his life, change him and bring a new dimension upon their life. Show him the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Let that which you have laid in their life, let no prison destroy it. Let no pit destroy it. Let no slavery destroy it. Let no pain or betrayal destroy it. Let them understand that we go through all these things, but the gifts and the callings of the Lord are without repentance. And so I pray right now, that business will come to pass. That family will come to pass. That ministry will happen. That calling will come to pass. That gift will be seen. Everything God showed you will be fulfilled. I speak this in the name that is above every other name, which is the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Your breakthrough is here. Your breakthrough is fulfilled in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. Thank you. May God richly bless you. Amen.